kids welcome back to my channel my name's Lizzie are you ready for another educational book this series used to be a TV show I'm not sure if it still is it might when I was a kid I loved watching it I also read all of the books and I love them very much it is the magic school bus and today we're reading the magic school bus inside the human body how exciting I just I don't know if you've ever seen the show ask your parents maybe they can find that on Hulu or Netflix it's really fun miss our uh, I think miss Fraggle is her name right we'll find out but I love her I wish I had a teacher just like her there she is right there driving the school bus all right if you need a drink a snack Anything, now would be a good time to hit the pause button. If not, let's get right into it, shall we? All right. Now, as you can tell, there's a bunch. Like, let me show you a better page. There's stuff on the side that the kids wrote. There's little blurps. And then there's the actual story. So, it's going to be a lot. But keep up because it, it teaches you a lot about the body. I'll show you the pictures before I change pages, okay? All right, it all began when Miss Frizzle, Miss Frizzle is her name, not Frazzle, <laughs> showed our class a film strip about the human body. We knew trouble was about to start because we knew Miss Frizzle was the strangest teacher in the school. Oh my goodness. So here's all the kids talking. I can't take the pressure. A film strip is only the beginning, you know. Yeah, I bet she has books about this, too. When's recess? <laughs> They're stressing out. Those are all the kids talking to each other. And it says, your wonderful body, and somebody's making duck. Looks like him over here is making the duck on the thing. <laughs> the teacher says, We've, we're going to learn about ourselves. This should interest you, Arnold. Oh. <laughs> all right look at the little she always has this weird lizard guana thing with her the teacher and it's on her dress too see all the kids these are all the characters all the kids in the book the very next day miss frizz made us do an experiment on our own bodies then she announced that we were going on a class trip to the science museum we were going to see an exhibit about how our bodies get energy from the food we eat. Oh, we got a paper handed in. Your body is made of cells by Rachel. Your body seems to be all one piece, but actually it is made of trillions of tiny pieces called cells. My body is made of trillions of cells. So is mine. <laughs> Trillions of cells. So that was a homework, homework paper one of the kids wrote. See your own cells. Most cells are so small that we can't see them without a microscope. Step one, gently scrape the inside of the cheek with a toothpick. So you can see that. You're scraping the inside of the mouth to get your cells so they can look at it through the microscope. Step two, stir end of toothpick in drop of water on a slide. So you put a little drop of water, and you put the Q-tip on there. Add a drop of iodine solution to color the cells. Step four, last step. Look at slide under microscope. See your cells. Ooh, weird, she says. There she is looking at her cells. That's what her cell looks like. Those are the steps so she could see them. Your cells need energy to help you grow. Move, talk, think, and play. Just being in Miss Frizzle's class takes all my energy. <laughs> She's telling him. And he's like, Miss Frizz takes all my energy. Different kinds of cells have different jobs by Gregory. Your lung cells help you breathe. Muscle cells help you move. Brain cells help you think. It's Gregory doing his homework. <laughs> He's drawing pictures, too. All right. The trip started out like any other trip. We rode to the mu museum in the old school bus. Along the way, we stopped at a park for lunch. 
When it was time to go, everyone got on the bus. Everyone but Arnold. He was still at the picnic table daydreaming and eating a bag of cheesy wheezies. Your tongue is covered with thousands of taste buds. By Arnold. Different parts of the tongue have taste buds that detect different flavors. Bitter, sour, salt, and sweet. There's Arnold doing his homework and he drew a nice picture of all the different flavor sounds that helps you taste flavors on your tongue. Leftover fish sticks, ugh, says Arnold. I'll take you, I'll, t I'll trade you these terrific fish sticks for that horrible peanut butter and jelly and banana sandwich. Forget it. Take a look at her shoes. Please, I'm eating. <laughs> She's got shoes with tongues on them. That's why she doesn't want to look at her shoes. When you eat, your body digests the food so your cells can use it to make energy. Miss Frizz is telling them as they get back on the bus. Your body needs good food by Cameron. For high energy and good growing power, eat lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, milk and milk products, whole grain, cereal and pasta, lean meats, fish, poultry and eggs, and not too much junk food. A science word by Dorothy Ann. <laughs> Digestion comes from a word that means to divide. When food is digested, it is di divided into smaller and smaller parts. So he's telling you all about the food groups and she's telling you how your body breaks your food down into little pieces. Hurry up, Arnold, called Miss Frizzle. She reached for the ink. <laughs> she reached for the starter key, but instead of she pushed a strange little button nearby. At once, we started shrinking and spinning through the air. From inside, we couldn't see what was happening. All we knew was that we landed suddenly. And then, we were going down a dark tunnel. We had no idea where we were, but as usual, Miss Frizzle knew. She said we were inside a human body, <laughs> going down the esophagus, the tube that leads from the throat to the stomach. Esophagus. Most of us were too upset about leaving Arnold behind to pay much attention. <laughs> Arnold's really out to lunch. There he is. Everyone's on the bus. He really is out to lunch. Go. Hey, where's the bus? So he swallowed and he noticed that the bus was now all of a sudden gone. There's the bus transforming, going inside. <gasps> Arnold's food. They're inside Arnold. Oh my goodness. Where's Arnold? He got left. That's what happens when you eat junk food. <laughs> I thought we were going to the museum. There's been a slight change of plans. We're being digested instead. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> food goes to your stomach through the esophagus by Wanda. The food goes down. Oh, the food does not just fall down. It is pushed along by muscle actions the way toothpaste is squeezed out of a tube. That's why you can swallow even when you're upside down. Muscles squeeze to push food to your stomach. So Wanda's telling us what happens when you swallow food. And that's exactly what is happening to Arnold. She shrunk the bus into his food and now Arnold put it in his mouth and now Arnold is digesting the school bus and all of his classmates. And he doesn't even know it. They're inside Arnold. <laughs> Poor Arnold. We are now passing into the stomach, said Miss Frizzle. It wasn't exactly quiet in there. The walls of the stomach moved in and out, churning and mashing the food into a thick liquid. The bus was turning around and around, and digestive juices splashed the windows. Now we knew how it felt to be a hamburger. Miss Frizzle drove to the bottom of the stomach. We'll drive through this opening to the small intestine, she said. Why does your stomach growl? By film. Sometimes your stomach churns when there is not much food in it. Then the gases in your stomach make a gurgling sound. Your stomach is like a built-in food processor. 
Ooh. <laughs> look at him. He's doing his homework. But look at the inside of the... Ew. All those juices and gross stuff and they're getting sucked. Ooh, that's gross. <laughs> yeah, somebody said yuck. Exactly. Roll up your windows, children, or you're going to get stomach juices in here. In the small intestine, food is broken down into molecules tiny enough for the body use the body cells to use. I want to go home. But this is educational. Does education have to be this messy? So the class is not happy. So they're going <laughs> They're going to the small intestine where they're going to get even smaller. Here's Arnold over here. I don't feel so good. Maybe it was something I ate. Yeah, you ate your class. There's the bird, poor kid. You ate your class and the school bus. And they're in his belly, spinning around, driving. <laughs> the small intestine was a coiled up hollow tube. The inner walls of the tube were covered with tiny fingers called villi. Villi? Villi? <laughs> in the villi are tiny blood vessels. Food mole mo molecules that's a big word, are taken into these blood vessels, said Miss Frizzle. Once the food is in the blood, it can travel all over the body. We felt ourselves getting even smaller, and Miss Frizzle started driving into one of the villi. She was going straight into a blood vessel. Ew. Why are the intestines coiled up? By John. In an adult... The intestines are 7.5 meters or 25 feet long. If they are stretched out straight, a person would have to be as tall as a house. Wow. So there's the stomach. Food goes from the stomach to the small intestine. And then it go, waste goes out through the large intestines. So in small intestines, out the large intestines. But everything must go through your stomach. Class, the bus is following the path of the food molecules into the blood. You mean this body thinks we're food? That's better than being waste. <laughs> yeah, it's so gross. I wish Arnold was here to see this. Another, another science word by Dorothy Ann. Blood vessels are tubes that carry blood. They are like pipelines running through your body. So she's telling everybody about blood vessels and how they're the pipelines of your body. <laughs> now we were in the blood, but it did not look red. Blood is not just a red liquid, explained Miss Frizzle. Blood is made of cells floating in a clear fluid. These cells look like red rubber saucers, someone called out. Those are red blood cells, Miss Frizzle said. Red blood cells carry oxygen from the lungs to all the cells of the body. Here and there, a white blood cell was busy destroying disease germs. White blood cells are like soldiers protecting your body from enemies, said Miss Frizzle. So when you're sick, your white blood cells go throughout your body and kick that virus's booty. <laughs> what is blood made of by Molly? A little more than half the blood is a yellowish fluid called plasma. The rest of the blood is made of floating cells. So plasma is up here in this clear part and that's actually blood right there. Why is blood red? By Shirley. Without a microscope, blood looks red because there are so many red blood cells in it. In every drop of blood, there are 250 million red blood cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen. So that's our, that's what it looks like, a big red saucer, like a big red donut that you'd go down a hill or like a snow tube. <laughs> Those are food molecules right there, those little dots. Did you see that? The white blood cell ate the germ. That's disgusting. <laughs> white blood cells destroy disease germs. So there in comes the white blood cell and he's going to eat it into his body and then he's going to fight it and there goes that virus because the white cell, blood cell came in, ate it and kicked its booty for you so that your body would be okay. 
We all need blood, white blood cells. What is blood for by Ralph? Your blood is like a delivery service. It carries food and oxygen to your body's cells and waste products away from the cells. Platelet cells help stop bleeding when you get cut. Okay, so these are disease germs in the body that aren't supposed to be there. So the white blood cells are going to come over there and beat them up. <laughs> and this is what platelet cells are right here. That's what clots your blood for you. So you don't, uh, like if you get a cut, your blood doesn't just pour out of your body and then you don't have any. It clots it. So it stops your bleeding. It's very important. All right, looking back, we saw a white blood cell chasing the bus. We'll be safer with the red blood cells, kids, said Miss Frizzle. She reached for the handle that controlled the bus's doors. Don't do it, we cried. But when did Miss Frizzle ever listen? The doors of the bus flew open. We were swept out of the bus and into the bloodstream. Everyone hitch a ride, called the Frizz. <laughs> Each kid grabbed a red blood cell as it went by. Our last glimpse of the bus was when it went up, went into another blood vessel with the white blood cell right behind it. That white blood cell must think the school bus is a germ. Well, this bus is pretty dirty. <laughs> so there's the white blood cell chasing the bus trying to eat it. Like, oh no, what are we going to do? Then they have everybody over here outside the bus now, holding on to the red blood cells for dear life. Why can't we just have spelling tests like other kids? <laughs> These red blood, red blood cells have turned dull red. They need more oxygen. We'll never get out of here now. Meanwhile, oh my gosh, I'm lost. Don't panic. <laughs> Arnold's freaking out because he can't find the class. Um, they're in your body, floating on your red blood cells. <laughs> the next thing we knew, we had flowed into the heart. Inside the heart are four hollow spaces, called chambers, said Mrs. F. Each chamber is a little pump. Two chambers on the right side of the heart look, took and used blood from the body and pumped it into the lungs. In the lungs, the red cells picked up fresh oxygen. Your heart is a pump by Flor Flory. It's a weird name. When the walls of the heart chambers squeeze together, they pump out blood. Just the way you can squeeze water out of a plastic squeeze bottle. <laughs> Your heart pumps use blood into the lungs to get fresh oxygen. So there she is, squeezing, squeezing her water in someone's face like, oops. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I think she did. So here's your or your blood going into your lungs here. Your heart pumps. Oh, this, I'm sorry. This is your right lung, left lung, and your heart in the middle. Right lung, left lung, and your heart. All right, so over here, we got the right lung. This is Arnold's body. This is his right lung right here. And over here, we have the first chamber, and it says, to the right lung, the blood goes that way. Down here, use blood from the upper body. So the used blood goes down into the second chamber. Use blood from lower body. So the used blood from the lower body goes down. The rest of the blood goes that way. And some of the blood goes up here to the left lung on this side. This is an air sac in your lungs here. This is the left lung. We get new oxygen from the air each time we breathe it in. So that's, you just got fresh oxygen, oxygen if you do that. We get rid of a waste gas called carbon dioxide each time we breathe out. I just gave you some carbon monoxide, <laughs> dioxide. Oh my God, not monoxide, that's a bad kind. New oxygen comes in, carbon dioxide goes out. But you know what? The trees and the grass, they all need carbon dioxide to breathe. And we need oxygen and plants make oxygen. So what we breathe out, they breathe in. And what they make, we breathe in. See? 
teamwork makes the dream work. Over here, my heart is pounding. Take a deep breath, you'll be okay, the bird says. Oh, his heart's racing because everyone's in his heart. <laughs> Poor kid. Have a heart, Miss Frizzle, get us out of here. <laughs> From the lungs, our red blood cells carried us back to the heart. This time we were on the left side of the heart, the side that pumps fresh blood back to the body again. Kids, it looks as if these red blood cells are on their way to the brain, said Miss Frizzle. Class, those brain cells need more oxygen. We'll never get home unless we find the bus. Maybe we'll find it in, its, in his brain. <laughs> blood goes round and round by Michael. In less than a minute, your blood makes a trip all around your body. This is called the circulation of the blood. One more science word by Dorothy Ann, circulate, comes from a word that means to circle. Blood circulates or circles all around your body. Okay, so they're from the right. They're going into the left lung now. So they're coming from the right, going into the left, to the third chamber. We learned about the first. Here's the third and the fourth. So we're going to learn about them. Fresh blood to the upper body. So this is where all the kids are going, where the fresh blood is, because their cells need more blood. Fresh blood to the lower body. Every, all the other blood that's not carried by a kid is going down to your leg, or Arnold's legs, I should say, the lower part of his body in the fourth chamber. Which way back to school? Use your brain, says the bird. He thinks he's lost. He's trying to find his way. Poor Arnold. When we reach the brain, we let go of our red blood cells and squeeze out of the blood vessel. This was hard to believe. Oh, it was hard to believe that this wrinkled gray blob was the control center of the body. Miss Frizzle said the brain is made of billions of busy nerve cells. They are constantly sending and receiving messages from the eyes, the ears, the muscles, and other parts of the body. Your brain is always working by Alex. Even when you're sleeping, your brain controls your heartbeat, breathing, and other body functions. Your brain never lies down on the job. 3 a.m. and it's still at it. <laughs> there he is doing his homework over there. Super cute, right? All right. Children, we are walking on the cerebral cortex, the pinkish gray outer layer of the brain. Without it, we couldn't see, hear, smell, touch, taste, talk, move, or think. This is the cerebral cortex. This is where they are. With Miss Frizz. All right, so it says that this is the speech center that controls how you talk. Over here, oh, hearing, it was folded in the book. This is what controls your hearing. Over here is what controls your vision. Up here is touch. And over here is your motor skills, which is like picking things up, catching things. Do you think we'll be smarter after this? I hope so. <laughs> All right, let's see, Miss Frizzle was driving that way to the museum, so our school must be this way. Good thinking, says the bird. You might find the school. All right. So the cerebral cortex controls thinking, moving, and the five, sen five senses. <laughs> then there's the cerebellum. Helps you keep your balance. Helps muscles work together. It's this little tiny part under the brain. Cerebellum. Very important. Then you have the brain stem. It controls body functions like heartbeat and breathing. That's right here. So you have the brain stem, cere cerebellum, I always forget that word. And then the rest of your brain is the cerebral cortex. That's what they're climbing on, that big gray thing. Cerebral cortex. Cerebellum, this purple part, brain stem. Interesting. We left the head by climbing down the bones of the spine. 
Inside the bones were this, were the, was the spinal cord, a thick bundle of nerve cells stretching from the brain. Smaller bundles of nerve cells branched out from each side of the spinal cord. These carried nerve messages to all parts of the body. If you want to move a muscle, by Amanda Jane. The motor area in the cortex of your brain sends out a message to move. The message travels down the spinal cord and through the nerves that control the muscles. So here is an idea. You want to move your arm. So your thought travels down your spinal cord to your arm. Hey, that tickles. That's your spinal cord. Like I said, it's the yellow spinal cord. Let me see if I can spinal cord right here. These are your nerves, these red things. And then, oh, I'm sorry, that's muscle right here. Nerves are the thing between the muscles. It's very tiny. I don't know if you can see it. So here's the muscle. Here's the nerve. Here's the spinal cord. They're all important to how you move. Don't look down, the kids say. I think I'm losing my nerve. <laughs> nerve bundle. Oh, that's a blood vessel. Children, we are sliding on a muscle. From here, we'll return to the bloodstream. I wonder where Arnold is now. I have the strangest feeling he's close by. I'll get there sooner if I run. He's panting. <laughs> the more active you are, the faster your heart beats. Poor Arnold's running. Muscles move your bones by Tim. Some muscles are attached to bones. When the muscles contract or get shorter, they pull on the bones. They pull on the bones. That And then doing that makes the bones move. And then you move. I don't think I read this one, did I? We followed some nerves that went to the leg muscles. The leg muscles were working hard. They needed a lot of energy. They used up a lot of food and oxygen from the blood. The heart was beating faster to carry fresh blood to the muscle cells. Okay. So here they are, climbing down the spinal cord of the class. What else we got? This is a nerve bundle right here. A bundle of nerves. Obviously, this is the blood vessel again. These red things that the kids rode in on. This is muscle fiber, what they're sliding on. This red thing is muscle fiber. Did I get everything? I think so. There's a lot on every page. <laughs> we entered a nearby blood vessel. The blood was moving so fast we were afraid we would lose each other. But at that moment, the school bus floated by. What a relief! <laughs> we jumped up and... We jumped on and went up through the heart and lungs again, just the way we went before. When we emerged from the bloodstream, we were in a huge open space. Where are we? asked a kid. Miss Frizzle explained, children, this is the nasal cavity. The what? we asked. The inside of the nose, Miss Frizzle said. Suddenly we heard a deafening noise. It sounded like, ah, uh oh, is Arnold about to sneeze? Class, we're on the way out of the body. Relax. We're going back now. So there they are, getting back on the bus, calming down. Miss Frizzle's trying to comfort them. And over here is the school bus, and they're in this wide open space, and they're like, what the heck's going on? She's like, we're in a nose? This time, she's gone too far. We're in a nose. <laughs> I am so grossed out. <laughs> I think I'm going to sneeze. Use your hanky, says the bird. So, yep, he is about to sneeze. That's what they're hearing. Ah, chew! <laughs> then we heard, chew! <laughs> A tremendous blast of air hit the bus full force. We flew forward, spinning around and around. What makes you sneeze by Phoebe? If something is tickling the inside of your nose, the tickling signals your brain. The brain makes you take an extra big breath. Then you say, ah, that's you taking a big breath. Then your brain makes the chest muscles squeeze your lungs. Air rushes out at speeds up to 100 miles per hour. That's when you say, chew.
<laughs> Class, the sound you hear is a sneeze. Anything in the nose can make you sneeze. It could be a bit of dirt or dust or some bacteria. In this case, it happens to be a school bus. Children, prepare for landing. <laughs> Please remain seated until the school bus has come to a complete stop. Is she for real? Because <laughs> they're freaking out. <laughs> now what? Now where are we going? Achoo! Kazoon height, says the bird. There's Arnold sneezing out the bus. <laughs> we were going so fast we couldn't see anything. But we could tell we were getting bigger. Then, sun! We landed. There we were, back at school, and there was Arnold in the school parking lot, blowing his nose. We're back! Look, there's Arnold! Arnold, we said, the trip was amazing! You should have been there! Where were you? <laughs> so there's Arnold, he sneezed out the bus, then the bus came life-size again, and then the class is getting off the bus like, Arnold, oh my god! And Arnold's like, oh my god, my class, I found you! Back in the classroom, it was business as usual. Miss Frizzle made us draw a chart of the human body for the bulletin board. The kidneys clean your blood and make urine. The bladder stores the urine. So this is your kidneys up here. Kidneys, you got two of them, goes down into your bladder, right there. Then over here, the liver stores vitamins and destroys poisons. It also makes bile, a fluid that helps digest fatty foods. So this is the liver and that's your stomach. Oh, over here's your stomach, sorry. Those are your intestines. So here's the class drawing this big human. So up here, they're saying it's the brain. Then we have the spine and the esophagus. The nose up here, the windpipe, which is what you take in air with. Then we have lungs, which is right here. Then we have our liver, which is very important. Then we have our gallbladder, which we can actually live without. A lot of people get it out. My sister just got hers out. Then we have blood vessels. Then we have nerves. Over here we have bone. This is a leg bone. Then we have muscle. I don't know if you can see it. it's in the center of the book. The large intestine and the small intestine and the stomach and the heart. And up here it says the human body. They're doing a good job making a giant diagram. <laughs> At last, everything was quiet in Miss Frizzle's class. Everything, of course, except for her dress. What a trip! I'd like to go to the lungs again. I'd rather go to Hawaii. <laughs> she must buy her clothes in outer space. Don't give her any ideas. <laughs> so there they are trying, they're all talking about what they all went. They're holding, they're putting up the picture they drew. There's all the kids talking. There's Miss Frizzle, they're making fun of her clothes. She does dress a little funky, doesn't she? Look at her, she doesn't have tongue shoes anymore. Now she has a rocket. Oh, then there's everybody's homework pages that we read on the back. Oh, that's the end. They have a test. We don't need to do a test. I just want you to have fun. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the trip inside a human digestive body. So you saw where when you put your food in your mouth and it goes down your esophagus and it goes in your stomach and then you learned which intestines comes first, how the blood comes in and out of your body and how your nose works. You learned a lot. I hope it was fun. I'll see you next time with another magic school bus. I got a couple of these books. I will share, share more with you. See you next time. Be good to your teachers. Be good to your parents. Be good to your siblings and other kids. But most importantly, be good to yourselves. And help the elderly when you can. Love and light kids. Be good. Bye.